What's that? It's a stick insect. Hello, bonjour. They get their names because, well, they do a fantastic impression of a stick. <laughs> Pretending to look like something else is called camouflage, and we see it all over the animal kingdom. Stick insects and leaf insects, which look like, you guessed it, leaves, are from a family called phasmids. There are over 3,000 species, and they're all masters of disguise. Stick insects will use their super camouflage skills to hide from anything that tries to eat them. Here are a few more animals that use camouflage as an advantage. Check these guys out. Oh, wow, look! Baby orchid mantids. Oh, now, they don't seem very camouflaged at the moment, but you wait. Indeed, indeed. Soon, they'll grow into adult orchid mantids, a bit like this one. Can you see? It's disguised itself to look like a flower. Perfect to hide from predators and really, really good to sneak up on prey. Ah, but before they grow into their camouflage, it seems like everything wants to eat them. Uh, be careful, little one. Oh. For you. Thanks, Andy. No problem. Hello, I'm Andy, and welcome to my secret hideout. I've just come back from one of my adventures, and I've got something in my shoe. Hey, it's a scorpion. What are you doing in my shoe? Huh, no idea. One moment I was shuffling along minding my own business, and then the next... Scorpions are incredible creatures. They come from a group of animals called arachnids, the same family as spiders. There are over 2,000 species of scorpions living around the world, and they live everywhere from the Himalayas to the Brazilian forests to even deserts. There are loads of fascinating desert dwellers in the animal kingdom. Here, let me show you. This is the Namib Desert in Africa. Oh, look, it's a pompilid wasp. She's looking for somewhere to lay her eggs. Oh. Watch out. Sorry. Uh-oh, she's uncovered a spider. It doesn't look happy. Oh. oh. What's it doing now? <laughs> it's a golden wheel spider, and it's using its cartwheeling skills to escape. Brilliant, eh? Peacocks have some of the fanciest feathers in the animal kingdom. You can talk. I saw you last week. Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> and they're not the only ones. Would you like to see some more animal show-offs? This is a peacock jumping spider, named because of its bright colours and fancy displays. It's only tiny, no bigger than a grain of rice. Hey, who are you calling tiny? Sorry, but a fantastic dancer. That's better. It shows off its best moves and displays its beautiful peacock-like fan. But if it's not successful, the female's going to eat it. So it literally is dancing for its life. Good luck. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, it's raining. Oh, look. Spring box. The rare rain around here helps the grass grow, which makes the spring box really happy. So happy, they start to dance. <laughs> this is called prunking. No one knows exactly why they do it, but it's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's a newt. Newts are carnivores. They eat insects, shrimp, and even worms. Yum! Delicious, slippery, slidey, wiggly worms. Newts belong to a family called amphibians. Amphibians are cold-blooded. They're born in the water with gills, and then they grow up to be able to breathe air. There are a few more awesome amphibians that you might well recognise. Here they are. These are leaf-folding frogs. And these little guys are trying to make their way to the top part of a leaf so they can call out and be heard from far away. This fella 
is inflating a special pocket in its throat so it can sing out and attract a female. My <laughs> female will lay her eggs on the leaf. Then the tadpoles, the baby frogs, will soon start to develop. As soon as they've got big enough, they roll out of the leaf and safely land in puddles below. <laughs> this is the Indian common toad. Toads are amphibians too. The female has been waiting for the rains to come so she can lay her eggs. The male turns yellow for just one day only, and that's so it can attract a female. You Jeff, look, <laughs> I'm yellow. Yeah, me too. Then the female lays her eggs, which look like this. They'll become toadlets and eventually toads. So you see, there are lots of incredible amphibians out there. Some of them may even live in your local park or garden. Hi, I'm Andy, and welcome to my secret hideout. <laughs> hey, Andy, don't forget about me. Oh, I can't forget you two. These are coates. Coates come from Central and South America. They're often found high up in the trees foraging for food. But that's not my most favourite thing about coates. My most favourite thing about coates are their long noses. Wah! It's not that long. They use them to snuffle into cracks and crevices to find food, like insects. There are lots of other animals who have very interesting ways of getting their food. Here are just a few of them. It's a salamander. Amazing! This salamander lives in caves, so because it's always in the darkness, it's not much use for its eyes, so it's completely blind. Who said that? Because it doesn't see, it's developed an incredible sense of touch. Its skin can feel tiny movements in the water, which tell it when its prey is nearby. Yummy! Ah, now this is a giant anteater. It's got poor eyesight, but an incredible sense of smell. It has really big claws that it uses to break down the termite mounds, and then sticks these long snout in an extremely long tongue to reach the creatures inside. Yummy! So you see, there are lots of animals with clever, if not unusual, ways of finding a meal. Can you think of any more animals that have interesting ways of finding food? Wow, that anteater's nose was even longer than mine. Hello? Anyone home? It's a caiman. Caimans are closely related to alligators and crocodiles. They normally live in Central and South America. Not under my bed. Caiman are carnivores, which means they eat meat. They'll munch on anything from insects to fish to small birds and mammals. And they have amazing, sharp, strong teeth that they use to crunch down on their food. Shiny too! Do you know any other animals with amazing teeth? I do. Here they are. <laughs> sharks! Sharks! <laughs> I'm only kidding. These are ragged tooth sharks. They only feed on small fish. Be careful, little guys. I'm getting out of here. Good idea. Can you see how amazing the two sharks' teeth are? They're constantly being replaced. When one falls out, another one is ready to take its place. I think I'll leave them to it. Wow, humpback whales, look at them go. They don't have teeth. Instead, they use these. They're called baleen plates. They're made up of the same stuff as our hair. It's like having a moustache on the inside of your mouth. And they use them to feed. Watch my show. You. The humpback whale takes a huge gulp of water and then closes its mouth. And then it pushes the water out through its baleen plate and it acts like a sieve, leaving its dinner behind. Clever, eh? 